Hi and thank you for watching. This is just a quick update in which I would like to point out some interesting aspects that came to my attention over the past two weeks. In the previous video I uploaded I pointed out how the red horse that is described in Revelation 6 is also mentioned in Zechariah 1. We have also seen how Zechariah describes the moment in time just before the red horse receives the big sword that is mentioned in Revelation 6. And in the description given by Zechariah, the earth is specifically mentioned to be quiet and at rest. So just before peace is removed from the earth. Please compare the following two passages in which we would seem to be shown a transition from the earth being at peace to all peace being removed from the earth. And all of this happening during the time at which the red horse appears on the scene. I saw by night, and behold a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him there were red horses, speckled and white. Then said I, O my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees, and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still, and is at rest. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword." There would also seem to be an association with what we are shown in these passages and the time of Purim, given the connection to the myrtle trees which are associated with the name of Esther. I have gone over this in the previous video for those who may have missed it. This would also seem to be connected to the events that are currently transpiring between Russia and Ukraine. We have a localized war that has started, but the rest of the world is sitting quiet and at rest. We are also told in Zechariah that at the point in which the rider on the red horse is seen, that the affliction has been helped forward. I explain the meaning of this in the legal case against Satan, where we have seen how Satan entered God's harvest and began to steal from it before the time that was appointed for him to do so. If you have not seen that video yet, please be sure to watch it, as it just shows us once again how our Heavenly Father always has a plan to outsmart the enemy. And we should expect nothing less from our Heavenly Father, who is in control of everything that happens, always having a plan to show us more of His love. Something that I came across over the past week or two is a video that was released in September of 2019, in which a question is asked about what would happen if a war broke out between Russia and the US. What is interesting is that the events that are now occurring between Ukraine and Russia are described quite accurately in this video even though different countries are mentioned in the lead up to the start of this war. Even the dates that are mentioned in the video are quite close to what actually happened. But what has caught my attention is the time span that is given in this video between the start of the conflict until the time at which a nuclear device is detonated specifically over Berlin. This of course is also something that we have seen in several predictive programming instances. Two of which I will mention include Leonard Cohen's song First We Take Manhattan and the second is the movie Atomic Blonde, both of these showing us clearly that Berlin would be the second instance of 9-11, which would point to another major false flag attack to bring about the destruction of civilization. When connecting this to what we are shown in God's word, this would be the point at which the great sword would be handed to the rider on the red horse, that would then take peace from the earth and to put to death vast numbers of people, as we read in Revelation 6. Now the time span that is given in this video from the infographic show describing a possible war that breaks out between Russia and the West, from the time that it starts until the bomb is dropped is 40 days. I see this once again as biblically quite significant, given that it would align with the time of Passover on the Zadok calendar. When it comes to Passover, we have had several instances in which this feast is described to us. It is very possible that during the time of Adam and Eve, that the animal skins that the Lord made for them to become their clothes occurred during the time of Passover, pointing us to the fact that by the shedding of blood, the blood of the Lamb of God, we would be covered. Then we have Abraham and Isaac showing us once again that God would provide himself as the Lamb to be offered, as we see in the words of Abraham. 
And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Then we have Israel's exodus from Egypt during Passover, in which they had to put the blood of lambs on their doorposts, once again pointing us to the blood of the Lamb of God, protecting us from any harm coming to us. Then the Lamb of God was crucified and shed his blood on the cross, also during the feast of Passover 2,000 years ago, where his blood paid for our sins, but not only ours, also the sins of the entire world. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Given the number of instances in which the fulfillment of Passover is featured throughout history, it stands to reason that there may yet be more instances to come, one of which could be the rapture of the church. Coming back to the time frame associated with the initial conflict that is described in this video from the infographic show, before a nuclear device is used. As I have stated before, the time frame shown in this video is 40 days, or from a biblical perspective, a period of judgment. And in 2022, 40 days from the start of the conflict, which started on February 24th, just happens to bring us to the time of Passover on the Zadok calendar, or April 5th. Ten days later, Israel will be celebrating Passover according to the lunar calendar, and one wonders then if this difference of ten days may have something to do with what was written in the book of Jubilees, where a reference to this difference is found, and one also wonders if these ten days may in some way be connected to the ten days mentioned in Revelation 2 or to God's promise of shortening the tribulation to ensure that some flesh will be saved. Of course, I have no idea if these passages would apply in this manner, but it would be interesting to see how this plays out. Given the situation between Russia and Ukraine, and what we have been shown through predictive programming, April and May this year could be very significant if our understanding of what is shared in Zechariah and Revelation is correct. I think that this war and how it will eventually lead to the emergence of the Antichrist has been shown to us in great detail by our enemy in an animated music video by the group Disturbed, which I have previously discussed, and this video of theirs going back to 2009. There is also a more recent video from them that was released in 2015, in which they even showed a war involving Ukraine that was part of this predictive programming, in which they also featured the media's role in instilling fear into the population of the world, the media being associated with a form resembling a virus. I will link both of these videos in the description below, because they are very carefully watched for copyright infringements. I will also link the video in which I previously discussed some of this in the description below. From the perspective of God's timepiece, or the heavens, I would also like to reference my brother in Christ Ken Potter's video, in which May 16th this year is pointed out as what would seem to be a watershed moment. There is a single lunar eclipse that is positioned in the middle of multiple symmetrical sets of solar and lunar eclipses positioned on either side. And given that our Heavenly Father stated that He created the heavenly lights to serve as markers for seasons and specifically for appointed times, it stands to reason that May 16th is of special importance, given how it would seem to be dividing between what has been and what is to come. May 16th also marks another period of 40 days after the start of Passover on the Zadok calendar, and should the rapture occur around April 5th, these 40 days would then mimic what we saw in the case of Jesus, who together with the 24 elders who were resurrected with him and who are described to us in Hebrews 11, represented the early rains that fell on the earth before the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The 40 days between April 5th and May 16th could represent the time of the latter rain. As I have stated many times before, I am not a prophet and I am simply looking at possibilities. The same importance regarding this date would seem to feature in the iPetco 2 animation, where the rabbit, which is located at the position of April or May, on the back wall in this image would seem to suggest that this is a focal point also for our enemy in their plan to bring into the open the Antichrist. We also see a lunar eclipse in this scene from the iPetco 2 animation, which could very well be the May 16th eclipse, 
and this scene would seem to resemble part of Albert Pike's plan for the Muslim nations and the political Zionists to mutually destroy each other. We also have to remember that the Antichrist will not appear on the scene suddenly. The Bible tells us about a process that will lead to the Antichrist's revelation. He will be one of ten Nephilim kings that will initially rule over the world, that will give their power to the Antichrist, and only once three of them have been done away with, will the world know who the Antichrist is. This is described to us in both the books of Daniel and Revelation. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So in the days ahead, my personal view is that God will soon give the rider of the red horse a great sword with which many will be killed, and that will remove peace from the earth. This could happen 40 days after the start of the conflict, or later, I do not know. I have a feeling that how this will start is through the use of a single nuclear device that may be detonated over Berlin or Mecca. This will then lead to emergency peace talks that would be aimed at preventing further escalation, and I specifically expect Angelina Jolie to be the person leading this mediation process. And if you see this happening, or something resembling a mediation effort, then you should be ready because at any moment after this starts, the world can expect great destruction to follow when they say peace and safety, as we are told in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief, Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. This will then also be the time at which the expecting and watching church will be removed from the earth, and where Satan will have unrestricted rule over the earth and those that remain on it for a short time. And I have to add that one does not know how Satan's transgression of God's law, in which he began to mark people before the appointed time for him to do so, will affect his ability to act without restraint. We have no idea if Satan will be allowed to do as he pleases, or if our Heavenly Father will impose some restrictions on him because of his transgression. Only time will tell. This is just a short update on what I currently see happening in the world and what to watch for, and I hope this information will bless you as we enter what I believe to be the final stretch. Please also join my Telegram channel provided in a link below where I provide updates much more frequently. Finally, I just want to thank from the bottom of my heart all of those who have supported this ministry financially and who have prayed for us. But especially over the past few months, your support has been such a blessing to us in very difficult financial times. May our Heavenly Father bless you abundantly for your kindness and generosity, not only in this life, but even more so in the life eternal that is before us. The Bible says that if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will receive salvation. Have you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God? Have you placed all of your trust in Him to save you from your sins? Jesus shed His precious blood on the cross to set you free from sin and your sins being washed away, and you becoming a fellow heir with Christ as a son or daughter of God, is a free gift to anyone who will accept. The only way in which you can obtain this gift is through faith. You cannot earn it, and you cannot pay God back for it once you have it. Would you not accept His gift of eternal life to you today, while there is still time to do so? Do not trust in your own works to save you, even if those works are the works that you do under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will receive all the glory for every person that He saved, and we can only offer Him our gratitude and worship.